What started as a solo developed project three years ago has arrived at last. Today we are reviewing the latest Metroidvania title to hit the market, Bo, Path of the Teal Lotus. But has this gorgeous action adventure inspired by Japanese folklore been worth the wait, or does it die without honor? Let's find out in our full review. Real quick, do the extra honorable thing and support independent content at patreon.com slash idreamofindiegames. Consider liking and subscribing to the channel, and hang out with Gamer Ghoulfriend every Thursday at twitch.tv slash idreamofindiegames to see all the latest indie releases live. Your new indie gaming community is waiting for you. Bo Path of the Teal Lotus may have started as a solo developed project, but throughout the years it has become a much larger game than was originally envisioned. Now staffed with a team, Christopher Stair and the rest of Squid Shock Studios have brought their vision to life in this beautiful 2.5D metroidvania platformer that plays just as good as it looks. A bright moon casts its light over a mythical forest teeming with bamboo and fantastical yokai. On what seems an ordinary eve, a light suddenly flashes in the sky, sending a meteoric object crashing down below, which gives birth to our strange fox-like lead character named Bo. Initially, we do not know our purpose, but what is immediately apparent is how beautiful Bo Path of the Teal Lotus is. The hand-drawn art is striking, filled with color and vibrancy, begging for rich lore that never quite comes. This is not to say Bo Path of the Teal Lotus Lotus lacks a story. Initially, you'll be treated disrespectfully by others, as if you are the runt of the litter for your species. It would appear that respect needs to be earned in this world, which is an arc that sets itself up for an interesting, if not a bit familiar, narrative telling. Unfortunately, the game struggles a bit with character development at times. You'll meet many villagers and travelers, but rarely become attached to any of them. The dialogue is not poorly written, and yet your journey never feels quite as important as it should. Questions will eventually be answered to some degree, but I can't say that the narrative ever truly dug its hooks into me. The game is massive for an indie release, but focuses more of its efforts on gameplay and exploration as opposed to building meaningful relationships. Those who favor gameplay over narrative will be happy to hear that this is where Bow Path of the Teal Lotus truly shines. Bow Path of the Teal Lotus should feel relatively familiar for fans of Metroidvanias. The goal of the game is to explore a massive map while taking on side objectives and a main mission. Just like any other Metroidvania, players can expect a sprawling world full of secrets, upgrades, and bosses. At the center of everything is the game's well-designed combat system and platforming. You'll begin unarmed, but soon discover that you possess an earring which can transform into different objects, mainly a magical equinox staff alongside a tea kettle. These two items are of the utmost importance, as the staff will be used to strike down enemies, discover secrets, and pogo hop off of your foe's heads and other objects, while tea will need to be sipped from your kettle if you wish to survive. Sipping tea will be a slow process at first, which can eventually be upgraded, but always require strategic use and timing. If you want to keep your kettle full, the requirement is defeating foes with the staff. This means that the two items are very dependent on one another. Your staff also has a few other uses, including being able to knock certain enemies up into the sky and send them off on a set trajectory in order to unlock new paths and solve puzzles. It's a versatile weapon which will take many forms, and like the tea kettle, can eventually be made stronger through upgrades. A huge focus of the gameplay is also placed on platforming. In Bow Path of the Tea Lotus, you'll bounce off of mushrooms to reach higher areas, chain together attacks to progress forward, or land on cliffs and eventually float through the wind in hopes of avoiding spikes. These are just a few examples, but the point is, if you aren't a fan of platforming games, this won't be for you. The platforming itself feels pretty good, but is not without frustration. Timing is crucial, and my blood did boil on more than one occasion, but for the most part, failing to link together jumps was due to my own mistakes in timing. The game has a feel that takes a while to get used to, which also carries over to the combat. Some enemies and bosses have specific weak points that need to be targeted. Other times, enemies swarm the screen from every angle, causing sheer chaos. This is not an easy game, but thankfully accessibility options such as invincibility exist for players that become frustrated during tougher stretches. Daruma creatures can also be collected, which you might think of as magical spells. Summoning a Daruma comes at a cost, but can give you advantages in battle, such as being able to shoot blue flames across the screen. If you're able to max out your tea kettle before summoning a Daruma, they will be even more powerful. It's a neat system that I probably didn't use enough. Daruma not doing it for you? Equip yourself with Omamori badges that offer additional perks. If that weren't enough, 
More upgrades exist, such as a grappling hook and wings. The grappling mechanic works pretty well, but can also lead to a few frustrating moments. When you aren't out exploring the map, defeating bosses, and finding keys, there are rest areas and villages to purchase items from. Upgrades range from improving your tea kettle and staff to being able to buy new Daruma. There is much to be purchased, and almost all of it feels useful. What is also useful is the game's well-implemented map. Set in a traditional Metroidvania style, key areas are well labeled, making it easy to remember places that need to be revisited or to locate your next quest. A fast travel system also exists which makes getting around fairly easy. The game's built-in quest log and inventory system also serve the purpose. As you can see in this footage, Bowpath of the Teal Lotus is gorgeous. The art team has done a phenomenal job bringing this world to life. Animations are striking, environments are lovely and varied, and the lighting almost always impresses. Massive bosses can fill the entire screen, while smaller touches like plants sprouting out of the ground give the entire package a magical feel. Enemies range from floating spirits to environmental hazards such as spiky red vines, from snowy fields to bleak caves and vibrant skies. The game looks incredible, reminding me of another recently released Metroidvania called Nine Souls. There are so many little details like water reflections or birds flying across the screen that make the visuals stand out even more. Sound design is also impressive with sparse music that matches the Japanese setting. Whether you're swinging your staff or bashing through rock, the sounds are always satisfying and gritty. The sound of wind blowing while accompanied by flutes and whistles is lovely. Most of the music will settle into the background nicely and isn't all memorable, but fits the context of what's happening on screen almost always. All of this is to say, Bow Path of the Teal Lotus looks and sounds beautiful. Performance was also very good on PC at ultra settings, and players looking to play on Steam Deck, you'll have a pretty similar experience. Having tested the first few areas of the game, I was getting a locked 60 FPS at the ultra setting. I couldn't believe it. Seriously impressive stuff out of Valve's handheld. Bow Path of the Teal Lotus sets out to be a great Metroidvania title, and it succeeds. The combat and platforming feel good, and the sprawling map offers plenty of quests and secrets that will keep players busy for hours on end. It's also jaw-dropping in its visual design. While it doesn't reinvent the genre, it does it pretty well. Yes, I had my gripes with the lack of character development, and the difficulty can be a bit much at times, which can luckily be remedied, but overall this is a pretty excellent Metroidvania game that belongs in your collection.